In February 2020, Italy became the first country to experience the coronavirus outbreak in Europe. Hospitals became overwhelmed and tourist sites completely deserted. While it seemed like a problem far away, for Maria Elena Italia Bue and many other Italians, it was a lived reality. Maria Elena called me from her apartment in Varese, a town only 50 kilometers from Milan. In the beginning, we didn't really understand how serious it was. And I remember reading like the news from China and it felt so distant, so unreal. And I guess Italy especially has been like the first country to actually experience it. I was supposed to meet my friend at the pub like a regular um, Saturday night. And at some point I texted my friend saying like, should we actually meet up or is it safe? And he, he laughed a bit at me saying, uh, come on, it's just a flu. Our friend is a med student and he's coming too. So if he's coming, you don't have to worry about it. And um, so we actually met. And on the way there, I noticed that the town was really, really empty, uh, very eerie and um, the pub too. <laughs> and we, we met and it was very, very you know, quiet also among us. And later my friend actually um, apologized for uh, pushing me to go out that night saying it was a bit dumb to say, to mock you for, for feeling, you know, uh, worried about the situation. And uh, that was the moment when we, we, we realized that it was not gonna be like any other Saturday night. And from that moment on, it hasn't been. Not far from Varese is the town of Bergamo, where COVID-19 hit its community the worst. The stories people told from, from Bergamo, from my hometown, Crema, uh, are heartbreaking. And uh, I think, especially in the first wave, when things were, were more hectic, hospitals were less organized and doctors didn't have enough masks. And, you know, it's really, really... Um, heartbreaking when you think about it. Despite the threat remaining high, Italy is easing its restrictions. Each region operates on a tiered coloured zone system, red being the most severe, orange slightly less restrictive and yellow the most moderate. There is also a white zone, a marker of a low danger COVID world. However, no region is currently there yet. It doesn't feel like this yellow zone can last very, very long. And, uh, you know, especially in a region like Lombardia, which is very, you know, is the most populated region in Italy. So uh, the places to meet and the things to do are, are you know, lead to a crowd. So, mm -hmm. um, yes, it feels like uh, you're being liberated now. But at the same time, uh, I, I don't... I'm not confident this can last until at least, you know, March or April when outdoors and, uh, you know, can be more, more useful, at least. Italy will be hoping for better days to come. Last year, the country's economy shrunk by 8.9% and unemployment remains high. Italy has also appointed a new prime minister, Mario Draghi, the former chief of the European Central Bank. For Maria Elena, she feels we can learn a lot from this year. Um, is there is there a world you envisage, you know, post COVID? <laughs> yes, of course. I I think yeah, no, I think of it sometimes, and uh, it's just the world that it was before. Like at least with no mask and a bit more um, uh, spontaneity in terms of meeting friends and be able to hug people <laughs> and yeah so I, I truly hope that we can at least get closer to that and be able to enjoy a bit more of spontaneity and just be able to go out I think though it's a world where we need to find a place for all these things we learned also in this year you know and uh, like masks and everything they can actually be helpful like not getting a seasonal flu next year <laughs> mm -hmm. so like it's a big learning <laughs> and um so yeah i i don't know i don't dare dreaming too much but uh, i truly hope uh <laughs> i can get to a gig at some point so <laughs>
I hope so too. Yeah.